students, and welcome to today's live IELTS class. My name is Adrian, and I'm streaming to you from beautiful Budapest here in the heart of Europe, situated right on the Danube River. I hope everybody has had a fantastic start to their week. Hi, Menaka Patel. Hi, MD Shariful Islam. Study with English. Bikram Kyber Jam NS and Flower Sun. Welcome all to today's live class focusing on speaking part one and discussing strategies for some higher band scores. Students, uh, while we wait for some more of your peers to join, this lesson is presented to you by aehelp.com for academic IELTS help. Make sure to join our premium package there, get all of our practice exams, HD videos, and much, much more. For general IELTS students, check us out at g-i-e-l-t-s-help.com where the materials focus on the general module. I'm doing great, Yura. Nice to see you. Nice to see some of our members in the class already as well. Students, this is a speaking class, so make sure to speak and repeat what I say. Uh, even uh, like these uh, intro kind of preambles, just speak, speak, speak. Tip number one for higher IELTS band scores, don't be shy. Speak as much as possible. One of the great tricks of children and the reasons that they learn languages quickly is they're not shy and they speak what's on their mind. This is what we stop doing as adults. But you should do this when you're learning another language. Students, you can download our apps, Academic IELTS Help and General IELTS Help from your Google Play and Apple App Store. You can link those apps to your web accounts for a truly great learning experience. If you have questions, just send me an email, adrian, A-D-R-I-A-N, at aehelp.com, and I will gladly answer your inquiries as best I can. All right, so this week, I have for you speaking part one today. Then tomorrow, we will start a task two with our members. And then we'll follow that up with some reading. Of course, we'll do more task two and then task one later in the week, and then speaking parts two and three on Saturdays. Jyoti, Thakur, I'm doing fantastic. I hope everybody is doing great also. All right, so let's warm up those speaking muscles of ours. And of course, you can type your answers into the chat. Just make sure to say them as well. Enunciate, copy my intonation, bold and brave, all right? Hi, Rajveer, nice to see you in the class. Okay, so uh, you walk into your IELTS speaking exam, you're greeted by the examiner, and they have uh, set rules that they must follow during the interview to assess you and give you an accurate score. They will begin with some icebreakers and some questions to get to know you. They'll give you instructions. They'll say, please take your seat. The IELTS speaking section has three parts. I will give you instructions for each. To begin with, uh, what is your full name? Again, practice this often so it's just automatic and fluent. So what is your full name? Give me your full name, students, in any way, shape, or form that is natural English and answers the question accurately, of course, Give the same name that you have on your identification because they will match what you say with your ID. Okay. Violet Nguyen says, my full name is Nguyen Thi Kim Nyan, but you can call me Violet. Yeah, okay, Violet, that works, sure. Um, Violet is clearly a nickname, so it's worth uh, using that vocabulary, Violet. So you can say, my nickname's Violet, please just call me that. Okay. Uh, all right. Uh, Khaled Al Noor says Khaled Muhammad Al Noor Abdallah Muhammad. Uh, you have to say more than that. So you should say my full name is or my surname, my given name. So you need to say these. Shruti, our member, says my name is Shruti Ramamurti. Please call me Shruti. That works. Simple to the point, but it's clear. Okay. All right. Chetan says my full name is Chetan Patel. 
Uh, and what should I call you, Chatan? So when you give your full name, if you don't tell the examiner how they should refer to you or what they should call you, that will be their next question. So their next question or their follow-up question uh, is, uh, and what should I call you? So it's a good idea to preempt this question, okay? So preempt this question, all right? Uh, that means that uh, those of you who study and know about this, uh, you should just say what the examiner should call you and not wait for this question. It shows that you're prepared, okay? It shows that you're ready uh, for the exam. So uh, my full name is um, Matthew Alistair. Uh, please just call me Matt for short. Okay. So, uh, repeat after me students. What is your full name? My full name is Matthew Allister. Please just call me Matt for short. Okay. Uh, now Matt for short means it's the short version of the full given name. Okay. But if you have a nickname like Violet, then you should say nickname. That's not a short form. Okay, so careful. Don't make silly, weird mistakes in the beginning. Okay, the next question, and these two questions are always adjacent. They're one after the other, uh, is uh, may I see your identification? Of course, uh, the examiner has to ensure that you are who you say you are and they're interviewing the correct person. So the next question is always, uh, may I see your identification? Sometimes it precedes asking your name. Sometimes it comes after. It doesn't matter. Okay. Just make sure to practice. Kyber Jan says, yes, sure. Uh, here you are. Please have a look. That works. Okay. Now students for these leading questions, these icebreakers, uh, make sure to really practice your intonation, pronunciation, so you sound as natural as possible, okay? Uh, here's a little tip for today. So this is our tip number one, okay? So really, uh, let's go tip first. So tip one, really practice your pronunciation and intonation for the uh, meet and greet uh, questions as this will suggest to the examiner that you have good natural English. Okay. Uh, the human ear is kind of funny. If uh, we hear good pronunciation in the beginning, even if later on there are more words that are mispronounced, our brain adjusts because we heard good pronunciation early. So it's a nice way to save some pronunciation marks is just really sound natural with these. So really, really practice your pronunciation when you're expressing your full name when you're handing over your passport, when you're responding to what are your hobbies or what you do in your free time, okay? So especially for those questions, focus to sound natural. Does that make sense, what I'm saying to you? Just imagine if I talk to you in your language and the first few sentences sounded really natural, then even if I was a bit less natural later, your brain would kind of be tricked into feeling that I have a lot of skills in your language. Okay, our, our mind adjusts if we give it the chance. Okay, so that's why you want to really, and, and you know, these questions, you say them so much, sometimes students get bored. They're like, oh, I answered that question. Okay, no problem. Really focus on the pronunciation. Okay, really focus on the pronunciation. Thank you, Hikmatillo, Bumi, uh, for the feedback. Aster, thank you. All right, so uh, let's get back to this one. May I see your identification? I saw lots of great answers there. 
Uh, Hemant, don't fake, so don't force your accent, but you should try to sound natural. Not funny, so not melodramatic. Don't don't o go overboard, Hemant, but uh, you should practice at least one type of natural English pronunciation. West Coast, North American, or British, up to you. Depends on what you started learning. Okay. Uh, Jessica Ron Singh has a really nice answer to this question. Jessica Ron Singh says, yes, here's my passport, which I used during registration. Yes, here is my passport, which I used uh, during registration. Please have a look. I would just say this at the end, Jessica Ron, so... Um, it's polite and it's even a little bit more robust. This answer is really nice. I like it. I suggest this one because you're using an adjective clause and it's great to show your complex grammar or your grammar range right away. Okay, Grammar range is definitely a big part of your overall score. So tip number two, make sure to use a range of grammar. Okay, Even high level students uh, will often be stuck using limited grammar and that's why it's important to record a full speaking session when you're practicing and then make a list of all the grammar that you used okay so here's another tip or you can even say practice here so tip two and also we could call this a bit of practice okay keep in mind that grammar range it's one of the criteria so grammar range is very important to get the higher band scores so you must include a wide range of grammar in the 15 well usually it's never 15 12 minute interview a good way to check this uh, is to record your speaking interviews at home, then listen and make a list of all different grammar forms that you used. Okay, so, and it's good grammar practice as well. Progressive, past, passive, conditional, cause and effect adjective clause, uh, coordinating, correlative conjunctions, okay? So that's just a short list. And of course, that will help you review grammar as well. Does that make sense? So uh, at home, when you're practicing, record listen back and then stop the recording and say, oh, okay, I'm using a progressive form there. Oh, okay, I'm using passive form there. Okay, I'm using present perfect. Oh, okay, I'm using past perfect. And then you'll see what your grammar range actually is. Some students think they use more grammar than they actually do. The examiner is marking these. The examiner has all of those different kinds of grammar and check boxes, and they're checking them off as they hear them, okay? So keep that in mind, all right? Okay, and then maybe one or two more um, icebreaker questions. Here's one typical icebreaker question uh, before getting more deeply into part one. What is your hobby? So what is your hobby? Give me a nice full sentence answer for this one. What is your hobby? Charlie Sen says, my hobby is to play cricket. Every time I'm on the field to play cricket, I believe my happy hormones are activated. Once I discover the effect of cricket, once I discover duh, the effect cricket had on me, it was tough to give it up, so I play every week. All right, Charlie, it's not bad, it's okay. A little bit awkward, but overall it's okay. Awaz Ahmedov says, my hobby is playing football as it helps me uh, zoom out after a tough day. Uh, zoom out is a bit awkward, Awaz, uh, for my um, 
English culture for Canadian anyway. I've never heard it used that way. I can understand what you're saying, but I would say zone out or unwind or decompress. Okay. So my hobby is playing football as it helps me decompress after a tough day of work at the office. Uh, just yesterday, I played a very dramatic game with uh, some friends and my team won. Yeah, that's a really nice example, Awaz. I like that. Okay, great. Uh, Teto Bati says, my favorite hobby is playing video games and watching Netflix. Uh, Teto, that's a good lead in. Uh, and then give at least a little bit more, and I a nice, smooth, flowing example. Uh, just yesterday, I played two hours of Call of Duty or FIFA 2018, something like that. Okay, Tito? So just a little bit more. Again, um, many of you know this already, but I'm going to include this as a tip three for today. Your brain should always be thinking, answer, explain, example. Okay, so tip three is answer explain example okay that has to be your mantra that has to be what's going through your head all the time when you're thinking about this and that will help your grammar range as well so uh, my uh, one of my many hobbies is collecting coins as I love to learn about uh, history through the images on currency. Currency, uh, yesterday I bought a Hadrianus uh, coin from 200 AD. It's really cool. Okay, um, so here's an example of that answer explain example. So uh, repeat after me. What is your hobby? Again, this is speaking students, so speak and repeat. What is your hobby? One of my many hobbies is collecting coins as I love to learn about history through the images on currency. Yesterday, I bought a Hadrianus coin from 280. It's really cool. I like it. Okay. All right. Then the examiner will now say, uh, I will ask you some questions on a general topic. Uh, let's talk about clothes. Okay. So let's talk about clothes. Uh, these topics are very general. They're designed for for most people who study English to be able to answer them to some degree. So talking about clothing, hobbies, friends, relatives, family, studying, these are very typical topics. It's impossible to guess what your exam will be about. I love seeing these videos online where they're like the hottest topics of 2020. Really? We have fortune tellers in the world that can predict exactly what topics are? I don't think so. I think they're just lucky guesses, okay? So strategy is much more important than trying to predict your exact topic. Uh, let's talk about clothes. Now, when you hear the word clothes, you should be thinking about articles of clothing, jacket, pants, dress, skirt, t-shirt, suit. You should be t uh, thinking about... Um, Verbs, uh, phrasal verbs, put on, take off, wear, okay? So that's what should be coming to mind. Here we go, students. First question, how often do you wear a jacket? How often do you wear a jacket? Flower Sun says, I guess that I wear a jacket three times a day. Uh, not only does it help me feel safe, but I also put all of my important and emergency objects in the jacket pocket, Flower Sun. Okay, um, I guess you live in a cold region of the world where you're constantly wearing a jacket, maybe. Uh, Ines says, I frequently wear a jacket, especially when I go outside, so I can put my phone and headset in the pockets. Good, Ines, nice answer. Kyber says, I usually wear a jacket in cold weather. Um, like the beautiful blue motorcycle jacket I wore most 
of this winter. And uh, whenever I decide to go outside, I like to put this on. I look good in it and I feel comfortable wearing it. Okay. Yeah, Aster, fashion would be a good word to think of as well. Absolutely. Anjan Lucky says, I often wear a jacket in summer as well as when I go to cold places uh, to stay warm. Anjan, uh, be really careful with your grammar mistakes. Used to mean you, means that you don't wear jackets anymore. And uh, keep safe from the cold is awkward English. You don't keep safe from the cold. Uh, you stay warm in the cold. Okay, so careful with that. Makrumajan Sabirov, I would love to wear a jacket on rainy days. Students, do not overuse the word would. Uh, would is modal, and we don't use modal language as frequently as some students believe, okay? So, Makrumajan, uh, I like to wear jackets on rainy days because it is more convenient than to walk around with an umbrella. Okay, good. That's better. Watch those corrections, okay? Uh, Hikmatillo says, I always put on a jacket during the winter because of the cold weather and also hat and gloves with a scarf. Okay, Hikmatillo, careful though. Gloves and scarf, yeah, it's not bad, but you're starting to go off topic. Stick to the jacket. Uh, Roshni says, well, I frequently wear a jacket, especially in the winter season, almost five to six hours a day while I'm working because it's too cold out, um, like uh, today. It was minus 20, okay? Sure, all right, nice. I love the uh, quantitative language, Rosni. So I wear a jacket for about five to six hours a day during the winter season. I do a lot of work outside, so it helps me stay warm, just like today in the minus 10 degrees. Okay, that would be your band nine answer. Uh, students, I am correcting your peers in real time. So their comments do become good English. Make sure to repeat after me, okay? There are lots of great answers from different students with just some slight corrections to make them higher bands and accurate natural English, okay? Uh, Kyber Jan says, I usually wear a jacket in the cold weather. Okay, I've read that Kyber with the blue motorcycle jacket. Haman says, I wear a formal jacket every day to my office as it is part of the dress code since I work in the client service department. Yeah, so you're talking about the blazer jacket that you wear over your dress shirt, Hamant. That's great. You can interpret it that way. So we do refer to that uh, blazer as a jacket as well. So it's good. I like it. Okay. You can have a formal jacket that you wear in the office. All right. Let's see a few more here. Uh, Saminder says, I normally wear jackets during the winter season to keep myself warm. Uh, Saminder, not bad. It's a little bit short. Use a little bit of a quantitative language uh, in that, right? So um, I'm going to take Saminder's and work off of that. So I usually wear... a winter, or I usually wear a jacket during the winter season to uh, stay warm, which lasts from about October through to uh, March. Uh, during these months, I probably have my jacket on an hour or two each day, such as this morning when I came to this exam, okay? So uh, you do want to be expressive students, all right? Don't over speak, don't just talk, 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 talk. That's not good, especially if you go off topic but you do want to give enough information so that the examiner can clearly assess 
your English level, okay? So don't just give these really short answers. You have to find the happy middle ground. One way to understand what that is, it's roughly about the amount of information that you can fit into one chat response. That's about how much you should say, actually say. So it's really nice to um, do these live classes with these chats because that gives you a good idea about how much you should say, okay? At least two thirds, okay? I think you have 200, 220 characters or something like that. So at least two thirds of that, okay? So repeat after me. How often do you wear a jacket? I usually wear a jacket during the winter season to stay warm, which lasts from about October through to March. During these months, I probably have my jacket on an hour or two each day, such as this morning when I came to this exam. That is your band nine answer, okay? All right, let's go to the next one here. Where do you like shopping for clothes? Okay, give me a nice full sentence answer for this one. Where do you like shopping for clothes? So think answer, explanation, example. Anjan Lucky says, I like to do shopping for clothes at the mall, which is near my house, about a kilometer away. Why, Anjan? Why do you like shopping for clothes at the mall? Is it the selection? Is it the prices? What did you buy there recently? Did you buy a, maybe a jacket or a pair of pants? So again, students, if you're only using one third of the chat, your answer is probably too short. Okay, and it's most likely too short. You're going to lose marks for fluency and all of the other criteria because the examiner is really not getting enough information to assess you for a high band score. Okay. NS says, I like buying clothes at Mavi, which is uh, a store close to my home, around 15 minutes uh, on foot. Just last weekend, I purchased pants from this store. Yeah, by walking is okay, Ines. Another way you can say it is on foot. On foot, okay? There's another way that we express the idea of being able to walk there. Jay Chovatia says, mostly I go to local shops because uh, being a student, I have a limited, uh, I have a limited budget, so uh, I go to places where I can bargain. Uh, just last week, I got a great deal on a new pair of pants. Okay, Jay? That smooth flowing example will move you from a 6.5 to a 7 or a 7 to a 7.5. Okay? This type of question would be a great one to just throw in that example. Just the other day, I bargained a new pair of pants, got a sweet deal. I picked them up for 15 bucks. Okay, Jay? Lots of points there for that kind of a response. So answer, explain, example, all right? Answer, explain, example. Hardash Shidu says, I always wear uh, jackets during the rainy season as well as in the winter because it keeps me warm uh, in both uh, times of the year. Um, Hardash, you're using the word season three times uh, in that sentence. So avoid repetition. Students, you do not want to repeat the same word over and over again if possible, especially not thrice, okay? So avoid that. Hardas, that was for the previous question, I realize, it's okay, just watch the repetition. Okay, uh, Yura says, I prefer to buy clothes at a shopping mall as I can look around various brands. Also, there are sales from time to time and I can save some money, like Yesterday, okay, you're a, so same uh, concept here. Go into that smooth flowing example. Uh, Rajveer Singh says, I love to shop through online uh, stores like Amazon and Flipkart as it usually saves both time and energy. Just last Saturday, I bought a t-shirt from Amazon without having to step outside of my home. Nice, Rajveer, some online shopping for clothes, good. Yeah, maybe somebody can say that they like shopping in a physical store because they can try on the clothes, okay? Pavan says, well, 
I'm not confined to any particular store as I live in the center of Bangalore. I go often to Commercial Street, which is no more than a kilometer, and look for discounts. Nice, Pavan. I made some corrections there as well. Uh, students, for your corrections, you can always check the time in the corner. It's uh, 29 minutes for you, Pavan, so you can see how I corrected your response. Okay, so make a note. Go back when the video is live a little bit later today and then repeat what I say. Okay, so in these live classes, students, it's a really great way uh, to improve your speaking and you're getting uh, what I would like to say virtually free help here. Um, so make sure to do that. Uh, go back. So this is my suggestion or tip four here. Okay, so tip four. Uh, when one of your responses is corrected, uh, make a note of the time in the video. Then later in the day or the next day, Go back, check the correction, and repeat. Okay, so make sure to do that. All right, so here's my answer. There is a strip mall. about five kilometers uh, from my flat. Where there are several outlet stores with which offer not only quality brand names, like Nike and Adidas, but also at a great price. I like shopping there. Just the other day, I picked up a new pair of running shoes at a bargain price. All right. So uh, repeat after me. Where do you like shopping for clothes? There's a strip mall about five kilometers from my flat where there are several outlet stores which offer not only quality brand names like Nike and Adidas, but also at a great price. I like shopping there. Just the other day, I picked up a new pair of running shoes at a bargain price. Uh, strip mall is the type of mall that's flat. It's not the big building where you have all the little shops inside, but it's the type of mall it's typical in Canada, US, Australia, where you have all of these uh, buildings around a parking lot. Often you will find outlet stores there. Outlet stores are these large uh, stores that get products directly from the factory and usually sell them for much cheaper than in the bigger malls downtown, the plazas, okay? All right, uh, let's go to the next question. What do you wear to work? That's quite a standard, typical type of question that people may ask from each other on a daily basis. So it's a good one to go for, okay? And so uh, where do you, thanks Hikmatillo, uh, what do you wear to work? Okay, multitasking, my brain, the wires sometimes cross. <laughs> All right, um, so what do you wear to work? Uh, Hemant, if you already answered that, then you should say that. You should say, as I mentioned earlier, I wear a formal jacket to work. Aside from that, I wear slacks, a dress shirt, and a tie. Okay, Hamant. So if you gave an answer, that's great. Connect it, Hamant. Connect it. Okay. So this is a good chance to connect if you talked about your work clothes already. Try it. Okay. 
Awaz, Ahmed Dab says, well, as I work at the office routinely, I wear a black suit with brown shoes. However, sometimes I wear jeans and a t-shirt and sneakers uh, colored black or white for special celebrations. Okay, or maybe you have some casual days at the office, Awaz. I know some companies do that where they have casual days and people can wear more relaxed clothing. Uh, Ferdobs says, uh, at my workplace, it's mandatory to wear a uniform. Uh, which includes a white shirt, black trousers, and a tie. So I don't have a chance to put on uh, fashionable clothing of my own choosing. For dogs, I upgraded your answer, okay, from a band seven to a band nine. So practice that. Okay. Hamro Pokhara says, I normally wear formal attire when I'm at work since it not only displays my personality, but also helps me build confidence. Okay, Hamro, um, good. I like it, just a couple of small corrections there. Uh, let's see what else we have. Charlie Sen says, well, there is no specific dress code at my workplace, but I prefer to wear formal attire. Usually I wear a dress shirt and pants, I prefer not to wear jeans. Uh, during the winter, as I had already mentioned, I put on a formal jacket. Very nice, Charlie Sen. I love the connection. Okay. All right. Het Parek says, I love to wear formal clothing uh, at work because it suits my personality, because it reflects my personality and it makes sense um but sometimes i do wear jeans for comfort all right harman preet kaur says i love to wear comfortable and formal clothes to the office like a formal shirt with a trouser that has dark color as these um hide any accidental spills and stains harman preet careful with tricky concepts you have to Use the right vocabulary to express it clearly. If you like wearing dark pants because they hide any coffee stains that you might uh, get from spilling that morning cup of coffee, you have to be able to express that clearly. Otherwise, don't go fancy. You'll lose marks. Okay. Uh, Rajbir Singh says, I usually wear casual clothes such as a t-shirt and jeans at my workplace, which are comfortable as there's no specific dress code in my office. Sometimes I also wear formal attire for meetings, especially when meeting new clients. Right, Rajvir? Nice. Okay. So uh, since I'm a teacher, I like to wear uh, formal attire to work as it projects my serious attitude uh, as well i wear slacks and uh, black shoes kind of similar to what i'm wearing today for this interview all right i again really encourage you to use those examples reflect Make it real, okay? Uh, what do you wear to work? Since I'm a teacher, I like to wear formal attire to work as it projects my serious attitude, as well as I wear slacks and black shoes, kind of similar to what I'm wearing today for this interview, okay? Lots of great answers there, by the way, students. Okay, this is kind of a two-part question, and you do sometimes get these uh, in the exam, even in part one. So let's answer this one. What do you wear if it is hot outside? What do you wear if it is hot outside? Give me a nice full sentence answer. Uh, Muftuna is asking a good question. Muftuna says, how can we answer that if we're not working? Uh, Maftuna, then you can say, currently I'm unemployed, but when I had a job, 
I used to wear. That's what you can do, Maftuna. Or if you haven't had a job yet, you can say, I haven't had a job yet, but I am studying to be a doctor, so I presume I will be wearing either a suit or scrubs to the hospital. Hmm. Okay, some nice English there. All right, let's take a look at the answer for what do you wear if it's hot outside? Um, let's see. Uh, Ravi Raj Savalia says, if it is hot outside, I like to wear dry fit clothes. I also like to wear uh, sweat resistant clothing um, and loose clothes rather than tight clothes. Uh, Ravi Raj, you can um, connect most of that a little bit better. So you can say, if it's hot outside, I like to wear dry fit clothes as these are sweat resistant or feel, com feel comfortable even if I'm sweating. As well, I like to wear clothes that are a bit loose rather than tight clothing also for comfort, right? Um, let's see some other answers here. Dahana, dah, Dahnanaji uh, Kathuria says, uh, in hot conditions, I prefer to wear shorts along with a nice t-shirt uh, because it's more comfortable and helps me stay Cool. Okay, good. Again, answer, explain, example. Uh, Rihan Mahmoud says, well, I like wearing a t-shirt to feel comfortable if the weather is warm outside. In contrast, when the temperature is cold, I wear a cap and a heavier suit. Okay. All right. So, um, if it is a scorcher, Scorcher. Scorcher means it's a really hot day. If it is a scorcher outside, like 35 degrees, I definitely opt to wear a t-shirt, shorts, and sandals as this type of summer clothing helps me uh, stay a bit cooler and more comfortable. All right, so paraphrasing is great. Using that grammar range is great. So if it's a scorcher outside, scorcher means a really hot day. So if it's a scorch, scorch means to burn something, okay? So shh, burn. If it's a scorcher outside, like 35 degrees or more, I definitely opt to wear a t-shirt, shorts, and sandals as this type of summer clothing helps me stay a bit cooler and more comfortable. All right, uh, what if it's cold? So what if it's cold? Okay, what if it's cold? Give me a nice full sentence answer for this one. I see lots of other great answers, by the way. I do catch uh, a lot of your answers that I can skim over with my eyes while talking, typing, and <laughs> reflecting on your answers. And there are some great answers there, okay? Uh, Ines says, when the weather is cold, I put on boots, a coat, and gloves in order to avoid uh, catching a cold and to keep my body warm. Uh, NS boots, B-O-O-T-S. Hamro says, I love to wear a zipper hoodie cardigan in, on a cold day since it both helps me to stay warm and look stylish. Hamro, nice, yeah. You want to have both function and fashion together, right? Both function and fashion. I'm a true believer that you can have function and fashion in today's world. I'm always surprised when people are choosing one over the other. I always tell them, eh, can't you have both? Have both. Uh, Rose, my Santo says, if it's hot and humid, I usually wear loose, comfortable t-shirt paired with shorts. I also bring an umbrella to protect myself from the sun. Uh, Rose, it's not called an umbrella. It's called a parasol. OK, 
Okay. Umbrella is for rain students. Parasol, which is the Spanish word or Latin word for umbrella. The parasol is what we call in English the umbrella that you use to uh, keep yourself from overheating or burning in the sun or getting heat stroke. Okay. It's called a parasol. Parasol. It's more accurate. Uh, Hemant says, since I'm living in a city which experiences extreme temperatures, I usually wear a uh, warmer inside layer, a uh, wool cotton knitted t-shirt, which I like to pair with, a, with regular denim pants and warm uh, sock shoes. I'm not sure what sh sock shoes are, Hemant, but it's possible that they exist. Uh, again, connect, right? As I had mentioned at the beginning of this interview, uh, during the winter months or the winter season, I wear my jacket when I'm outside. Also, I wear boots with warm uh, wool socks and a warm uh, cap to keep myself from catching a cold and to stay comfy. All right. So again, repeat after me. What if it's cold? As I had mentioned at the beginning of this interview, during the winter season, I wear my jacket when I'm outside. Also, I wear boots with warm wool socks and a warm cap to keep myself from catching a cold and stay comfy. All right. Uh, and of course, I wear pants too, ski pants maybe. <laughs> All right, students, couple more questions. Uh, do you have any sports clothing? And has your clothing style changed in the last 10 years? How? I will leave these last two questions for you to try on your own at home. You can send your answers as an MP3 recording to my email, adrian at aehelp.com, and I will gladly give you a little bit of uh, feedback, your score estimate on what you would get on the exam were you s to say that. Hikmatillo comfy is just a short slang way to say comfortable. Nalang Patel has answered that, I can see. Same with Pavan. All right, students, uh, for lots of HD videos, of course, this is live stream, so... We don't have HD quality quite yet, but uh, for HD pre-recorded videos for the speaking, including lots of mock speaking interviews, uh, we are probably the most popular um, website in the world for IELTS speaking interview samples. Uh, sign up for a premium package at aehelp.com for academic IELTS and G-I-E-L-T-S help.com for general. Fantastic job, students, today. Uh, lots of great work. Keep it up. You've got brains on your shoulders. Make sure to use them and prove that you are as good as you think you are because I know you are. Much love from the heart of Europe in Budapest. Bye for now. See you tomorrow.